This tutorial helps you set up your Ender 3 V2, upgraded with a BL Touch, with instructions for automatic bed leveling and starting your first print. If you did not add a BL Touch upgrade when ordering your printer from Tiny Machines 3D, go to the other tutorial video that covers manual bed leveling. A link is provided in the description below. You might watch this video once or twice to familiarize yourself with the procedures before actually performing them. Then follow along step by step and pause the video when necessary. Note that this tutorial is specific to printers with custom firmware developed by Tiny Machines 3D. This firmware features more precise and advanced procedures, improved interfaces, safety features, and tweaks that greatly change the overall performance of the printer, notably different from stock printers purchased elsewhere. All of this goes into every printer shipped by Tiny Machines 3D, the result of extensive collaboration with Marlin developers and their primary firmware developer, David, of Insanity Automation. Before we begin, credit goes to Chuck Hellebuck, and his YouTube channel with tips and tricks for Ender 3 printers. A modified version of his corner leveling G-code is used as a part of this setup. You can find a link to his channel in the description below. If your Ender 3 V2 has a BL Touch upgrade installed by Tiny Machines 3D, be sure to attach this connector as you assemble the printer before the power is connected and turned on. This Phoenix plug is useful for packing and shipping, as well as troubleshooting issues or malfunctions later on. In this video, you may notice this Z-axis end stop. This is not used on printers with the BL Touch upgrade installed by Tiny Machines 3D. It's on this printer at our tech center for testing purposes. After assembling the printer, Checking that everything is secure and square and all cables are connected. Plug in the power cable and turn on the power switch at the back left side. The welcome screen will appear. Then the main menu. When the printer is powered on, the BL Touch will perform a startup test as it drops and retracts its pin. Then stay on with a red glow. If it is flashing, usually the result of the pin hitting something during its test, it will reset when it performs an auto home. Or you can raise the Z-axis or hot end and power the printer off and on to clear the error. Shown here, lowering the Z offset to negative 1.5 first is optional and you may choose to do this as you gain more experience with your printer. Tiny Machines 3D printers with BL Touch have a Z offset between negative 2.5 and negative 3.5. This step lowers the nozzle partially and reduces the amount of adjustment later. With the BL Touch, the auto home procedure differs as the printer doesn't home to a mechanical Z end stop switch. Instead, the probe measures and sets a safe Z position for the nozzle, about 5 millimeters above the bed. On Tiny Machines 3D printers, the hot end is moved so the probe, rather than the nozzle, is positioned to the center of the bed, and any other probing functions will have that same offset. This provides the most accurate measurements, which will then be applied to the nozzle position and height while printing. Place a sheet of paper between the nozzle and bed. It's often best to wait until the auto home is complete, but you may go ahead and position it during the procedure as long as you don't obstruct the probe as it contacts the bed surface. After the auto home, Select Prepare, navigate to the Move menu, and set Move Z to zero. This step is very important. If the position is not Z zero, this will affect the next step, set Z offset, and the nozzle's printing height will be incorrect. If it's too low, this will likely cause damage to the print bed, nozzle, and other components as the printer will force the nozzle into the bed. If it's too high, there will be adhesion issues. In the Prepare menu, select Z Offset. As you move the paper under the nozzle, turn the knob counterclockwise to lower the value. 
As you feel the paper begin to drag between the bed and nozzle, slowly lower the nozzle until the paper still moves but with some resistance. As you gain experience with your printer and observe the results after making this adjustment, you'll be able to set the Z offset more accurately. Once the Move Z and Z offset are checked and adjusted, navigate to the control menu and select Store Configuration. This stores your settings in memory, even when the printer is turned off, and is referenced by the starting script in the Prince G code. Insert the micro SD card, contact side up, in the slot on the front of the printer. On the menu, select Print, then the TM Corner Level file. After the Auto Home, the G code file instructs the printer to move the hot end to the front left corner of the bed and wait. Insert a piece of paper between the nozzle and bed, then turn the knob at the corner until the paper just begins to drag. If the paper will not fit, don't worry. Lower the corner by turning the knob clockwise until the paper slides into position. Some bed knobs are marked to indicate which direction raises and lowers the bed, but they can be difficult to see. Turn clockwise to raise the bed and counterclockwise to lower it. Once the first corner is adjusted, press the knob and the hot end is moved to the back left corner of the bed. After adjusting each corner twice, pressing the knob to confirm each adjustment, the printer will perform another auto home with the BL touch and the procedure will end. Repeat this procedure if necessary to check or fine tune the adjustments. When manual bed leveling is complete, select the level button on the main menu. This issues a G29 command, initiating an automated procedure in the printer's custom firmware developed by Tiny Machines 3D. The probe measures nine points on the bed, generating a bed mesh that's stored in memory. The printer utilizes this while printing to compensate for any variations in the bed surface. Though you can set Z offset and auto level the bed at ambient temperature, you may get more accurate results by preheating the bed first. The surface profile of the bed may change as it reacts and expands when heated. Navigate to the Prepare menu and select Preheat PLA. Wait and observe the bed temperature until it reaches the set temperature. You may choose to lower the nozzle temperature as it's not as crucial for these measurements. Navigate to the nozzle temperature by selecting control on the main menu, then temperature. There are a few ways to heat the system, but using the preheat preset is a one-click process and this activates both heaters. Then you can adjust or turn off either unit separately in the temperature menu. Place the filament on the spool holder on top of the printer. While this video shows a larger standard kilogram size spool of filament, a smaller sample roll is provided with the Ender 3 V2. However, regardless of the spool size, the loading procedure is the same. Select Prepare on the main menu, then either of the preheat options for PLA or ABS, depending on the filament being used. Wait and observe the nozzle temperature on the lower left until it reaches the set temperature. Carefully unwind the filament down to the extruder below. If the filament is bent or kinked, this will likely affect the printer's performance by restricting movement as it's fed to the hot end. Either cut these portions off or carefully straighten the filament. Use the included flush cutters to cut the end of the filament at an angle, tapering it to a point. This is necessary to feed the filament into and through the extruder and down the Bowden tube to the hot end. While opening the spring-loaded idler arm on top of the extruder, carefully push the filament into the entry hole. Then feed the filament between the drive gear and idler pulley to the hole on the other side of the extruder and into the Bowden tube. As you use your printer, you'll develop a technique to squeeze the idler arm just the right amount to help guide the filament. Once the filament has entered the tube, you may either use the knob to advance the filament or you can gently squeeze the idler arm and feed it manually, 
until it reaches the hot end. If the hot end is preheated to operating temperature, the amount of the resistance you feel will change as the filament is melted, and excess filament may be extruded from the nozzle. It's important to prime the nozzle with filament, manually pushing it through the nozzle, as it's standard procedure to extrude filament immediately as a print begins. Pre-sliced print, or G-code files, are included on a micro SD card, provided with the printer. Insert it, contact side up, into the slot on the left front of the printer. Be sure to remove any debris, paper, or tools from the bed, select print on the main menu, then scroll down to select the file you want to print. Here, the pre-sliced PIG test print from Creality is selected. After the bed and hot end reach their set temperatures, the printer will perform an auto home. Then it will perform the auto leveling procedure. Be sure to remove excess extruded filament that may hang from the nozzle or stick to the bed during this procedure, as filament will expand and emerge from the nozzle as it's heated, or as the result of manually pushing the filament through the nozzle as covered previously. For this smaller bed, this nine-point sequence takes about two minutes, and with test prints included, it performs this before every print to ensure successful results. Next, the printer will perform a swipe along the edge of the bed, then move to the center of the bed and print a skirt before the actual print begins. These two functions, which are included in the G-code file, serve three purposes. First, to remove any excess filament that may have emerged prior to contacting the bed. Second, this further primes the nozzle to establish consistent flow. Third, it's your final check to determine that the filament bead is sticking to the bed with the correct squish and bed adhesion. So, as the skirt is printing, it's an opportunity to adjust Z offset on the fly before the print begins. All of this is critical for a successful print. This represents a cross-section of the shape of the bead of filament that's needed as the skirt and first layers of your print are applied to the bed. If the nozzle is too low, there may not be any visible filament, or it may appear flattened on the bed, and this can cause clogging issues at the hot end. You may hear the extruder click as this happens as the flow of filament is compromised. If the nozzle is too high, the bead will have a round shape, will not stick to the bed, and it can easily detach from the bed when you move your fingertip across it as a test while the skirt is being printed. If you have not achieved this by the time the print begins, it is recommended to stop the print, remove everything from the bed, and start again. Though you may observe what appears to be a successful first layer, it's recommended to stay at the printer and watch as the additional base layers of the print are added, especially if you are new to 3D printing. Here, if you look closely, the first layers aren't ideal for an optimal print and appear rough and a little wavy. This is a sign that the Z offset could have been adjusted a little more. If you observe uneven printing, where continuous portions of the first layer can vary in thickness and may look rough on one side, this is usually due to manual bed leveling issues. However, the print may still be successful as long as the first layer is adhered to the bed. Though these issues may not be detrimental to the overall quality of the final print, Observing them is an opportunity to learn, gain experience, and further adjust your printer to achieve better results as you begin each print. The Ender 3 V2 features a carborundum bed, a carbon lattice adhered to glass. It transfers and retains heat more efficiently and improves bed adhesion. For best results when removing a print, it's best to allow the bed to cool completely. Not doing so may result in a damaged bed surface. You may notice that the bed is placed glass side up in some sections of this video. This option may be preferred by some users and is suitable for specific filaments or print conditions. When cleaning this bed, 
Do not use solvents, high percentage alcohol, or acetone. Window cleaner and a microfiber cloth are more suitable as they won't damage the bed. Shown here, in its completed form, is another test print from Preality that is included with your printer, a cat different from the pig that was started before. You can see the removable supports that are included in the pre-sliced G-code file. To remove the print, wait for the bed to cool down to room temperature, then carefully pull the print from the bed, being mindful not to damage the print bed surface. It should detach without much effort. At the time of this video, there were some issues with this file. Some supports are missing, causing overhang issues. This is a perfect example of common 3D printing problems and learning how to correct them. A new file will be available on our website and with newer printers. By following this tutorial to set up and adjust your Ender 3 V2 and returning to it as needed, you will achieve successful prints and correct common issues that may cause failures. If you're a new user, welcome to the world of 3D printing. And as you watch this tutorial, learn and gain experience, you'll enjoy your new printer and everything you can create with it. Inspected and tested 3D printers. Upgrade installations by experienced technicians. Excellent service and support. Tiny Machines 3D. Thank you.